Reggie fils is a figure in the gaming community unlike any other, a fact perhaps best exemplified by the very first words most gamers heard come out of his mouth. My name is Reggie, I'm about kicking ass, I'm about taking names, and we're about making games. Ever since that fateful introduction, Reggie has evolved into a powerful industry leader, one who isn't afraid to embrace the community's love, and one who carved a powerful path against conventional wisdom, all with a straight face and confident tone. This is the story of how the son of two immigrants became one of the most welcoming faces of gaming's biggest publisher. This is Reggie fils -Aimé. Reggie fils -Aimé was the son of two immigrants, born in the Bronx, New York. Both of Reggie's parents were from Haiti and left for America because they weren't allowed to marry in their home country. During the 1950s, Hades was embroiled in a conflict between its democratic government and military dictatorship, and Reggie's maternal grandfather was a member of the Haitian government, while his paternal grandfather was a general in its military. Despite being well-educated, neither of Reggie's parents knew English and had to learn the language in America. His father found work as a mechanic while his mother sold jewelry. fils was raised in Long Island and, as a child, envisioned himself pursuing a career in the sciences. He later said that he bought college-level chemistry textbooks while he was still in middle school. From an early age, fils also took an interest in sports, playing both varsity soccer and basketball while attending Brentwood High School in Long Island. Reggie attended Cornell University in New York between 1979 and 1983, where he was the president of the school's chapter of the Phi Sigma Kappa fraternity. Reggie graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Applied Economics. While attending Cornell, fils was chosen by Procter & Gamble as an undergraduate to enter their brand management program, something typically reserved for postgraduate Master of Business Administration candidates. Reggie used this opportunity to follow a path into employment at Procter & Gamble, and worked in their food and beverage division from 1983 to 1991. However, he left Procter & Gamble to work at Pizza Hut as their Senior Director of National Marketing, a position he held throughout the 1990s. During this period, Reggie helped launch and market the Bigfoot Pizza and the Big New Yorker Pizza, and he credits this time at Pizza Hut as an educational experience. Reggie explained, In the restaurant business, you learn how you're doing the next day. Interestingly, fils was working at this position when Pizza Hut partnered with Sony to launch a line of PlayStation demo discs. How much involvement Reggie had with these demo discs is unclear, but this was his first professional experience with video games. After his stint at Pizza Hut, fils jumped around to several other jobs. This included the head of marketing for Guinness, where he was responsible for all of their brands in the United States, as well as the company's foreign relationships in the United Kingdom, Jamaica, and the Czech Republic. In the early 2000s, fils moved into entertainment-focused businesses, joining MTV Networks as the senior vice president of marketing at VH1 in 2001. That same year, Reggie laid out and executed the marketing strategy for The Concert for New York, a charity fundraising concert for the victims and families affected by the 9-11 terrorist attacks. The concert took place in Madison Square Garden on October 20, 2001, and generated more than $35 million for disaster relief. Though Reggie was able to boost VH1's ratings by 30% by shifting its focus to younger viewers, his time at the channel taught him a great deal about advertising to different audiences, particularly VH1's target demographic of 25 to 49-year-olds. This perspective would come in handy during fils next job. In December of 2003, Reggie joined Nintendo of America as the Executive Vice President of Sales and Marketing, where his initial responsibilities included all marketing for Nintendo products in the US, Canada, and Latin America. However, rather than being a behind-the-scenes executive, fils was about to make a much larger splash as a face for the company. Leading up to E3 2004, fans became concerned with Nintendo's performance. Though in no true financial danger due to some intelligent investments and a war chest of assets, the common perception of Nintendo had become one of childishness and immaturity in an industry that conventional wisdom said was increasingly geared to adult and mature themes. Additionally, the GameCube was underperforming compared to the Xbox and PlayStation 2, and the Game Boy appeared to be in danger after Sony laid out plans to enter the handheld console market with the PSP. All of this depressed fans in an era where the so-called console wars were driving the industry. These fears were squashed when fils walked onto Nintendo's E3 conference and opened with, My name is Reggie, I'm about kicking ass, I'm about taking names, and we're about making games. Everything about this was a stark contrast to Nintendo's image, previously a very reserved company with conservative, dry conferences. Especially while under the leadership of Hiroshi Yamauchi, this new assertive style immediately resonated with fans. 
The rest of the show was equally aggressive, with Reggie directly calling out Microsoft and Sony, and the reveal of the Nintendo DS, which subdued fears of the PSP taking away Nintendo's handheld market share. The show ended with Reggie revealing a trailer for a gritty, realistic take on the Zelda franchise, something hardcore fans of the series had wanted since Ocarina of Time. Again, this was a drastic change from Nintendo's conference the previous year, where their big reveal was Pac-Man vs. Perhaps the most important thing Fizume did during Nintendo's E3 2004 conference was call out the people who wanted Nintendo to exclusively target the same audiences as their rivals. He said, We're not going to run our company just for hardcore gamers. There are gamers out there who aren't as knowledgeable as you, gamers who aren't your age, gamers who don't have your tastes. This would become the defining ideology for Nintendo for more than a decade, and remains one of their core values as a game developer to this day. Ironically, Fizume did not write his now iconic opening line about kicking ass, and actually had to be convinced that it was the right direction to go in. This speech was instead written by a contracted strategist and speechwriter from a PR firm Nintendo hired. It was indeed the right decision and even had other industry executives praising Nintendo's move. Peter Moore, former vice president of Microsoft's interactive entertainment division, said, It was so out of left field and it was even a little cheesy, but it was so unusual for a Nintendo executive. I think he's exactly what, at that time, Nintendo of America needed. For his performance at the conference, Fizume was immediately embraced by the gaming community, and given several nicknames from fans. The most famous of these was the Reginator, leader of the Nintendo Regilution. Even if he hadn't had a direct hand in the creation of any of the games Nintendo was making, Reggie became the face that was selling them, and he'd brought excitement and hope back to Nintendo fans. Funnily enough, Fizume did not know that his performance had become so popular until his then 16-year-old son called him and told him that he was famous. In the time after his debut at E3 2004, it became clear that Reggie was not nearly as outwardly aggressive as that pre-scripted onstage persona was. As the years went by, he became increasingly soft-spoken and warm, but that didn't mean that he was a pushover either. Behind the scenes, Reggie was working hard to redefine Nintendo's relationship with retailers. Before this, Nintendo had to meet the demands of retailers to guarantee favorable placement of their merchandise in stores, a practice that was perhaps a relic of the era when Nintendo had to convince stores to carry their products at all. Reggie, however, flipped the script, renegotiating so that retailers would only be given inventory if they agreed to Nintendo's terms instead. This was a risk. But the strategy worked, mostly because retailers saw how much consumer demand there was for the Nintendo DS, interest that would only later be rivaled by the Wii, Nintendo's next home console. This success did not come without hard work, however. During the mid-2000s, Reggie commonly worked 70 to 80 hour weeks, and regularly got to work before 8 a.m. Fizume explained, I push people really hard. I push our agencies hard, and I push our business partners hard. But I think folks' respect is that I do what I'm asking them to do. Long nights, weekends, whatever it takes to get the job done. This hard work paid off for Fizume, as on May 25, 2006, he was promoted to President of Nintendo of America. And what followed was a time of unprecedented success for the company. Though Fizume would be the first to tell you that he was not the architect of Nintendo's boom during this period, that was Nintendo President Satoru Iwata, Reggie was still instrumental in that success. He was the one who outlined and executed the marketing strategies that would propel the company's success in the Americas. Though video games had traditionally been aimed towards boys and young men, the DS, Wii, and the 3DS were all marketed with broader appeal. Nintendo wanted people who didn't consider themselves gamers to buy their consoles and play their games. Reggie pointed out that the industry is becoming more and more insular. We're becoming more and more a group of players who are spending money on new systems, but are we growing the industry in total? Arguably not. Fizume's time working at MTV and VH1 gave him a unique perspective that allowed him to both tap into younger audiences while also appealing to older people that may not have considered buying video games for themselves before. He even pushed Nintendo to advertise casual games like Nintendogs and Brain Age at conventions and events held by the American Association of Retired People. Over the next decade, Reggie worked tirelessly to market Nintendo's consoles to anyone and everyone, whether they thought they might have been interested or not. And because of this, the company saw sales figures unlike anything they'd seen since the Game Boy in the mid-90s. In the Americas, the DS saw just under 60 million lifetime units sold, the Wii sold over 48.6 million consoles, and the 3DS moved almost 23.5 million units. 
What's more, Reggie welcomed Nintendo's fan community just as much as they embraced him. fils frequently acknowledged and riffed on jokes and memes that were born from his onstage performances or gaffes, like claiming that my body is ready, while demonstrating the Wii balance board at E3 2007, making him even more likable to fans, journalists, and industry analysts. In 2011, Nintendo began producing a series of online news conferences known as Nintendo Directs, and Reggie was a frequent presenter and host of the program. During these directs, he would also take part in short comedic skits to help advertise games or entertain the viewers, leading to some quotes and moments that are still referenced often by Nintendo fans and pundits to this day. And really, if you're neither one yet, what's wrong with you? fils also broadened Nintendo's online marketing, often partnering with influencers and internet creators for more interviews, stylized debates, and satirical sketches. The amount of communication and transparency from both Nintendo and fils during his presidency of the company is access that fans had never had before, and something unique for a company and an executive even amongst the gaming industry. However, this isn't to say that Reggie's run at Nintendo progressed without any issue. The Wii U, their home console released in 2012, became the company's first major blunder in over a decade. This was due to a bad choice of name and poor marketing that failed to differentiate it from the Wii to everyday consumers. As a result, the Wii U failed to reach the heights of the Wii, selling just 6.49 million consoles in the Americas during its lifetime. However, even in the face of these disappointing sales, Reggie was not one to wallow. In the words of his longtime girlfriend, he is not given to any sort of negative thinking. He doesn't worry, he doesn't waffle, he doesn't waver, he doesn't agonize. This unrelenting positivity would unfortunately be tested in 2015, however. On July 11th of that year, Nintendo President Satoru Iwata passed away due to complications from a tumor in his bile duct. The loss of his boss and mentor affected fils deeply. He gave a speech remembering Iwata at the 2015 Game Awards, during which the cheerful persona Reggie had become known for cracked, and viewers could hear him choking back emotion more than once. The man was fearless. Finally, on a personal level, he was my boss and he was my mentor and he was my colleague, but most of all, he was my friend, and I'm a better person for it." Still, his forward-thinking ideology led fils to focus on marketing Nintendo's next console, the handheld home console hybrid known as the Nintendo Switch. According to fils Nintendo needed to be crystal clear in our communication about what the product was and what the product could do, as to avoid similar issues with the Wii U. From the beginning, the Switch was marketed as its own independent handheld device that could be linked to a TV, and its trailers were designed in a way to let consumers know everything that could be done with the console. Bloomberg described the strategy in trailers as unlike anything Nintendo had done previously, and Nintendo even booked a Super Bowl ad for the first time in the company's history to market the Switch. This strategy was successful, and the Switch has already been heralded as a success fewer than three years into its life cycle. It has sold just under 13 million consoles so far in the Americas alone. Though fils has never gone on record to say he was directly involved in the development of any games during his time as president of Nintendo of America, he did influence some games that would release, and some that wouldn't. Reggie was at least partly responsible for the inclusion of Star Fox content in Ubisoft's Starlink for the Switch. While attending a closed-door demo for the game with Ubisoft, Reggie was impressed with the potential of the title and invited the developers to personally present it to Shigeru Miyamoto. Earlier on in his career, fils voiced distaste for the Wii title Disaster Day of Crisis, slamming its voice acting as laughable and claiming that it wasn't worth its $50 price tag. The title never reached American shores, partly because of its poor European sales. Finally, Reggie has also acknowledged several fan campaigns to get other titles localized for American audiences. His supposed refusal to have Mother 3 brought to the West has been a running joke since the mid-2000s, and the joke has even been part of skits during Nintendo Directs through the years. Come on, Reggie, give us Mother 3! <laughs> Though Reggie has said that fan petitions do not affect Nintendo's business decisions, he did acknowledge Project Rainfall, a fan campaign to get Xenoblade Chronicles, The Last Story, and Pandora's Tower released in North America. All three games were eventually localized for the North American market, though how much of that decision was impacted by Project Rainfall is unclear. On February 21st, 2019, after nearly 16 years at Nintendo, fils announced that he was retiring in that year. 
Interestingly, the position of President of Nintendo of America was to be taken on by Doug Bowser, the head of marketing and sales, Fizume's previous position. Reggie recorded a video announcement that was posted on Nintendo's Twitter account, where he thanked fans directly for being so passionate about both Nintendo and about him, once again embracing the nickname Reginator. The news of his departure was met with both sorrow and well wishes for Reggie in his retirement. The very fact that such a farewell video talking directly to his fans and consumers was recorded for a company CEO, usually a very invisible position, speaks volumes to how well Reggie communicated with the fans of Nintendo during his tenure as president. And the fact that people were lamenting his retirement shows how beloved a figure he had become. It is unquestionable that, without fils and his marketing genius and approachable personality, Nintendo would not be the powerhouse that they are today. Because of Reggie's work, now everyone, young and old, knows that Nintendo is about making games. Did you also know that Satoru Iwata single-handedly helped Game Freak include the Kanto region in Pokemon Gold and Silver? Or that he programmed the original Smash Brothers game in his spare time and during weekends? For more facts, check out our tribute to the life and career of Satoru Iwata. You can also watch our video on Smash Brothers and Kirby creator Masahiro Sakurai.